What's happening, guys? Keith here with your July 25th edition of the Impact Report. So I decided to do a midweek report this week because we had a couple of news and notes happen, and I decided I didn't think it was uh, necessary to wait all the way till Sunday to give you guys this information. So first, we have an article on DailyDDT.com that says Impact Wrestling Slammiversary 2018 and the Power of Positivity. So I'll give you guys a little preview of what the article has, and then I will leave the link in the comment section below. I'll pin it up so you guys can check that out. Uh, so it says, Sunday night was Impact Wrestling's proving ground. A pay-per-view with good word of mouth, an impressive storyline build, a unique venue, and a roster chomping at the bit to put on a performance to rival any modern-day super show. The company, if anything, over-delivered. On Sunday night, there was a massive disturbance in the force. A brief perusal of my Twitter feed provided an eye-opening shift in the perception of Impact Wrestling. Whisper it quietly, but Slammiversary was getting rave reviews. What in the name of Hulk Hogan's ego was going on? So like I said, I will leave that link in the comments section below for you guys to check out. Um, WrestleZone posted some transcript of uh, what went on on this week's episode of Killing the Town podcast with Storm and Cyrus. Uh, Don Callis talked a bunch about Impact Wrestling. Uh, he talked about the Austin Aries versus Moose match. Uh, ha the main event having to follow up two great matches in the LAX match and the Pentagon and Sammy Callahan match. Uh, the, there being a clean finish in the main event. Um, he actually talks about him and Scott Demore really liking clean finishes. I mean, in the past, we were used to a lot of screwy finishes, so they want to uh, kind of get rid of that. Um, he talks about the storytelling with Moose, uh, scripted promos, if they do script them, in fact, for the wrestlers or not. Uh, he talks a little about Sammy Callahan and his initial impressions on OVE, which he uh, didn't have some kind things to say in the beginning when he had his first glimpse of them uh, watching Impact Wrestling. However, his mind has changed. So I will leave that in the comments below as well for you guys to check out. Um, good stuff there. Uh, we have also learned that Impact Wrestling has put tickets on sale for the August tapings, which will take place on August 12th and the 13th. And this will be, once again, from the Rebel Complex in Toronto, Canada. Uh, I looked really quick, and as of this recording, there was only nine VIP tickets left, so that is great news there. Um, I've heard nothing but positive things about this past set of tapings, and I want to give a huge shout-out to uh, people that were in attendance that weren't posting spoilers, at least not on my feed. Um, so that's awesome to hear. I mean, in the past, we've seen spoilers constantly, constantly posted, um, but it seems like we're getting away from that, and that's great for everybody. Uh, so, apparently, Chris Adonis had spoke with Chris Van Vlay at the, that wrestling event this past weekend in Orlando, Florida, and uh, he kind of opened up about his release from Impact Wrestling. Uh, here's what he had to say. I like that group, and I had a lot of fun there with those guys. It just came down to it in the end that it really wasn't enough money once they started cutting the budget for me to really show up for work. That's all it was. I like Eli Drake, but I didn't favor the way they had me booked as his cheerleader unless it turned out into something we could do with a program and work with him, and it eventually led to him being a babyface and me a heel. If we would have done that, it would have worked out great, but I would also have wanted to be paid adequately. It just came down to those facts, and obviously I just ended up quitting. I literally just after two days at the taping booked a flight back to Toronto and just decided I wasn't coming back. I reached out to them when I landed in Toronto and told them I wouldn't be coming into work, and that was it. It was as simple as that. My 35th birthday came around, and something in my head just popped in, and I said, I'm not going to do anything that doesn't make me feel good or that I don't want to do at this point, and that was one of the starts. So it seems like that was his reason for leaving. So that was that. No huge loss there. Um, also, we have learned that apparently Abyss has re-signed with Impact Wrestling. Um, WrestleZone had posted this confirming it, and it is unknown about the length of the contract. However, if any more information comes up about that, I will let you guys know. And last, so 
On Twitter yesterday, a user had asked Chris Jericho. He says, Chris, I know you're busy with Japan and your music career, but would you ever consider going to Impact Wrestling? Chris's response, of course. So that is very interesting. Um, we will obviously see in the future where that goes. I think that would be absolutely huge for Impact and uh, just another adventure in Chris Jericho's career as he has been all around the world. So before I leave, I have a question for you guys, and I'm wondering what you guys think Impact needs to do to take that next step. Um, just kind of leave a comment below. I'm very curious to know what you think they should do. Um, either, you know, maybe terms of a video game, more merchandise, maybe signing a huge talent like Chris Jericho. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Um, I will talk more about that, I guess, on Sunday's edition of the Impact Report. But that is all I have for you guys right now. Thanks for checking out my video. And I will see you guys Friday for my Impact Review. So until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.